So, good day everyone. So, our topic, it's all about introduction to system analysis space, which is, uh, this one is our topic para sa application, development, and emerging technologies. Kasi, uh, we have to create a design for, um, for functional requirements and for constructing and documenting for the artifacts of a software. So, system analysis space, when we say system, is a set of integrated devices that input, output, process for storing information. So, it's a kind of program na pwede kang mag, uh, uh, mag integrate ng mga files or data inside of computer system. When we say analysis, ito naman yung tinatawag na critical thinking for helping a business and it also for computer system for run more efficiency. Means, kailangan mo rin mag-create or mag-analyze ng isang system. So, pace naman, ito yung tinatawag na period of time. So, kung susumain, kung gagawa ka ng isang system, you have to analyze and then meron kang tinatawag na uh, uh, task or due date para sa gagawin mong uh, system. Now, meron tayong uh, requirements, analysis, and modeling. So, these are the under of system development life cycle. So, these are the main topic of our uh, lessons. Pero, dapat nating alamin kung ano pa yung mga stages, types, and kinds of uh, rec uh, system development life cycle. Sa ngayon, pahapyawang ko muna itong data model and analysis. So, data model and analysis is a description of how data should be used to meet the requirements. Yes, given by the end user. So, data modeling helps to understand the information requirements. It differs according to the type of the business because the business process or each sector is different and it needs to be identified in the modeling stage. So, meaning to say, data modeling process start with the requirements gathering. So, yan one of the example of system development life cycle. Itong diagram na ito. So, tsaka ko explain when the uh, six st stages of requirements are finished na. So, next... So, nung ginagawa pa ang ating system development life cycle, si Peter Chen, noong 1970, nag-introduce siya ng entity relationship modeling. So, when we say entity relationship modeling, it applies for representation of information. So, then the unified modeling language was introduced to replace the object modeling methods. Kasi, kaya niyo pina, uh, iniba yun, it's because gusto niyang maging uh, mas mahapyaw at mas naiintindahan ng mga end user or mga user. Yan. So, noong 1980s, ito ginawa. So, these are the system development life cycle. We have four. Consists of requirement modeling, data and process modeling, which is yung data modeling, object modeling, and development strategies. So, the first one is the requirement modeling. So, when we say requirement modeling, is assist as identifying the requirements for a new system. Yes. So, one of the example of requirement modeling is the input and output system. So, <clears throat> now, we have flow or stages of requirement modeling. The first one is the requirements. The second one is the analyze. The third one is the design. The fourth one is the implementation. And the fifth one is test. And the sixth one is the deployment. So, let's talk about the requirements. So, requirements, ito yung tinatawag na standard language for object-oriented software design, which is the unified modeling language. So, it defines the software functional requirements in terms of cases and actors. Industry standard graphical language for specifying, visualizing, 
constructing and documentary the artifacts of the software system. In short, ang unified modi modified language or modeling language, it visualize the design of a system. Meaning, you, ano pa lang siya? Blueprint, wala pang in-implement, wala pang ka, wala pa siyang code or anything. Bini-visualize pa lang siya as a standard of a system. <laughs> Next is the diagram structural of requirement. The first one is the class diagram. So, or structural. When we say class diagram, ito yung uh, functional or describe for object attributes, operations, or relations. So, meaning, bawat structural na ginawa mo sa code or bawat uh, requirement na hinahanap, meron siya tinatawag na planning. Ayan, planning. Saan nakakabit ito? Ito ba, uh, ito ba yung nagiging next ng code mo? Or ito ba yung masusunod na interface ng code mo? That's what you call class diagram. So, meron tayong pangalawa, the sequence diagram. Ito yung tinatawag na functionality of the system. So, meaning, yung behavior nung iyong system. So, uh, so meaning to say, what happens interaction between the objects? Or, paano pagka ganito yung i-click? Ito ba yung susunod? Or, ito po ba yung gagawing codes? So, yung tinatawag na sequence diagram. Ulitin ko, pag sinabing class diagram, naka-structural siya. Naka-planned na. While the sequence, ito yung pagkasunod-sunod ng iyong mga program or system. Next is the under of stages, is the analyze. So, ano yung pagkakaiba ng data modeling sa analyzation or analyze requirement? So, data modeling, ito yung tools and techniques used to understand and analyze how an organization should collect, update, and store data. So, meaning, pinaprocess pa lang niya yung isang data or kinikip pa lang niya. For example, di ba, sa system ng pure gold, nakikita nyo when you scan, when the cashier is scanning, di ba, meron yun na sariling um, program para kay admin, may sarili rin kay cashier. So, si admin pa lang yung pwedeng mag-edit, pwedeng mag-update, pwedeng mag-collect, at pwede pang mag- store doon sa data. Yun yung gamit niya. So, hindi pa siya implemented. So, while the analyzation or analyze naman kung paano i-structure yung iisang system, means wala pa siyang implementation. So, more on ano pa lang siya, blueprint. Yan yun yun. So, yun yung data modeling in, in, implemented na. While the analyzation, it's more on planning pa lang. Or in Ina-analyze pa lang nila kung paano or how the software or the system it works. Or how to maintain the data na kinireate nilang system. So, design, syempre, designs are the base on the wants and needs of intended customer. For example, kung merong gustong bumili sa inyo ng system or program. So, for example, mga enrollment system, li library, you have to communicate the target customer Hindi yung basta na lang kayo yung <clears throat> magsasabi na, ay, ganito na lang kulay, ganito yung designs. Dapat, tap, alam niyo, uh, you must be identified kung ano yung gustong gawin ng, dis, ng customer, ano yung gusto niyang design, dun sa product nyo, or kung ano man yung target na gusto niyang gawin sa, uh, i-implement ninyong, or what they call that, yung pinopropose ninyong system. So, implementation, these are the meet in order to solve the business problem. So, requirements are divided into functional. What the system will have to do and non-functional constraint within what the system will have to perform. So, that's the, way, that's the meaning of implementation. So, na-meet na yung requirement and then kailangan ma-meet nyo rin yung dalawang Fun, uh, requirements ng functional and non-functional. So, anong gamit neto? Kaya ba neto? Kaya niya bang i-store? Kung i-click ko ba itong sign up? What will be the next? Ano yung i-perform niya? What will be the for, uh, what will be the tab 
kung sakaling i-click ko yung isa pang ganitong button. So, yun yung implementation. Means, meron na siyang update. Next is the test. Ito yung tinatawag ng runtime behavior of a software. So, means, checking, checking of if it is the system is okay or not. Or, kailangan pa siyang baguhin or meron pa siyang uh, dapat ayusin. So, last one is the deployment. Ito na yung kabuuan ng iyong requirement modeling which is napasa na siya sa requirements, napasa na siya sa analyzation, sa design, sa implementation, sa test. Ito na yung dinideploy na which is wala na siyang error, wala na siyang deficiency, ibig sabihin na manifest na. It will be, uh, can, can be it produced na or it can be ex uh, existing na na natapos yung kabuuan ng stages and then you upgrade and then it will be deployed na. So, that's the uh, use of requirement modeling. So, next topic natin, it's all about data and processes modeling. So, that's all.